morning and welcome to Makeup with Me, the show where you get ready with me in the morning before I head into the office. Today's another exciting day of me actually going into the office. I went in yesterday. It's kind of becoming my, becoming my normal routine. I'm going in uh, one to three days a week, um, either Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, not necessarily all of those days. For example, I went in yesterday, Wednesday, and I'm going in today, Thursday, but I did not go in on Tuesday. My husband and I were just talking about we need to kind of fill our social calendar up a bit, whether it's with other people or just activities for us and the kids. Um, I mean, I guess maybe because of quarantine or maybe just because complacency, I don't know. We've kind of gotten to a place where unless we have some activity um, planned, which we have, we had like birthday parties and stuff, but unless we have some activity planned, we end up just kind of sitting on the couch, hanging out at the house all day, kind of waiting until nap time, just kind of wishing the day away. And we were like, we've got to, we need to like do some stuff. There's tons of stuff in our area where we can like go take the kids for a couple of hours, let them run around and play. We could go just like get out to a park, like do something. And so I think it's like affecting our mental health negatively too, that we're just kind of like cooped up with like no purpose. Like our purpose is raising our kids, but raising our kids lately looks like hanging out all day on the couch watching TV. And I don't know, it just, it kind of feels like meh. I don't know how much of anything that you just heard because didn't have my mic on, whatever. You live, you learn. Okay, so I've already put on my moisturizer. And now I'm going to come in with my NYX. My moisturizer has sunscreen in it, by the way. So now I'm going to come in with my NYX Marshmallow Primer. Um, it's like voted their best primer. I don't typically use primers. Like, I kind of just added it in because I saw it. It was like buy one, get one free at my local Ulta. So I just kind of added it on. Um... And I don't know, I'm kind of indifferent. I'm like, I'll use the tube until it's empty, but then I don't know if I would necessarily repurpose. I don't feel like I've noticed a lot of improvement by just adding a primer in. Um, but I've also made a couple other changes. So maybe when it runs out and I stop the primer, if I notice a difference, I'll be sure to report back. But as of right now, it's not, I'm just kind of like, eh, whatever, I could, could do with it, could do without it, you know? All right, so now I'm adding on a primer that I definitely could not do without, which is my eyeshadow primer. This stuff definitely makes your eye makeup stay all day. And um, I'm using the Fenty Beauty by Rihanna one right now. Um, let's see. Yeah, the Fenty Beauty by Rihanna one right now. But... Um, I've used Urban Decay in the past too, and they both work about the same. They, I think they cost about the same. So, no real major preference there. All right, so I usually, y'all know my favorite is my Tom Ford foundation. I've tested out the NARS foundation um, recently and um, really like it. I've also always really, really liked the um, Makeup Forever foundation. Well, um, I got a sample from Makeup Forever. And so it is a great sample pack. It's very much like the Tom Ford sample pack where they give you a bunch of different shades and quite a bit of colors. You can actually play around with it. And I was like, hmm, why don't we test out that today? So I'm gonna use this little four pack Makeup Forever foundation. It is the matte velvet skin. It's a full coverage foundation. So typically I'm not a huge fan of full coverage foundations because um, I mean, I just don't tend to wear a lot. Um, the Invisible Cover Foundation, the Ultra HD, I don't think they consider this one, which is the one I was talking about earlier, I don't think they consider this one full coverage. I don't know, so I guess we'll find out how thick, how full coverage this, um, this Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin Foundation is. So, um, the reason that I like it when they send all these colors is not just so you can mix and kind of create your own for your full face, but also because I like to kind of contour with my foundation. So I purposefully get um, like multiple shades in the foundations that I buy so that I can kind of create dimension on my face with the foundation itself. So the contour, the powder contour, the cream contour that I use a little bit later, I don't have to use as much. And also um, these are really freaking hard to open. I mean like Herculean effort over here doing the Lord's work. Um, yeah, so that way I can do like more of a contoured look with the foundation and kind of blend them all together instead. Oh my God. 
instead of um, all over color foundation and then like trying to, man, and then trying to uh, add on like another layer, you know, I'm over the age of 30. So oops, I don't need to be adding too much stuff that can just crease on my face because wrinkles are not my friend. I just got that like all over my hand trying to, trying to open that. Okay, I'm gonna like put this somewhere because that's dangerous. All right. Um, so I can already tell just by opening these, these are much thicker. This is like sitting in there kind of like clay. It is not, um, it, like it wasn't spilling out. Like it's definitely not super liquid. And you can tell I just blotted it and it came off kind of like frosting. So I'm going to merge those two colors together. Oh, that is dark. This is definitely darker than my Tom Ford foundation, probably too dark for contouring. But um, it's already on my beauty blender. It is what it is. Like we got to roll with it, you know. So I'm going to mix in a little bit of the second to darkest shade in there to help blend that. And I'll put that under the chin too, to kind of accent that jawline a little bit more. So I'm gonna blend all this in. This is much, much heavier. Wow, this is much, much heavier than my Tom Ford foundation. Much, much heavier than the old Makeup Forever foundation. And also much heavier, much, much heavier, like dramatically more heavier than the NARS foundation. If you're looking for some comparison points, you know? All right, so I'm just blending that down the neck and then I'll blend this up into the skin to kind of do like a faux contour over here and into the hairline. I probably could have used about half this much, like I'm actually wiping off my beauty blender on my, uh, on my rag down here because like this is, it's, this is way too much. Like I barely tapped it. Like, let me see if I can hold this up and y'all can see. I don't know if that's in the view. Like literally like blotted it almost with my beauty blender and that's how much coverage came off or much color is coming off. Like this stuff is thick. Thick with two C's. All right. Okay. I like, I mean, I like the coverage though. It's kind of looking a little cakey, a little heavy, but once again, I think I put a little too much on. So I'm going to try to blend that out even more. Continue to wipe off my blender. Like, wow, that's just, that's a lot. Now I kind of look like I have mud face. Like I just like was playing in the mud. So we need to brighten this baby up. I'm gonna add in the second to lightest color. This is probably closest to my actual all over color. And I'm going to use this to kind of clean up those dirty edges so that it looks like not just a little bit more blended and a little bit more like natural dimension on my face. It's way too dark though. Wow, wow, I look like I got like seven spray tans. All right, let's see what the under the eye section looks like. All right, so I'm using the lightest color they sent, which honestly, like the lightest color they sent is probably the color that I would use for my all over face. So that just tells you how off these colors are for me. I mean, it's gonna work. I can lighten it up with like a little bit of powder and stuff, but just keep that in mind that like, this is, I'm actually gonna add in a little bit of that lighter shade here to just cut that a little bit more because it's looking like I got kind of a spray tan and like, a shade or two too dark. I'm gonna lighten up under here with that lighter color. All right, not too bad. Like it's, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm working with a sample pack here. So these are not like exactly my color. If I was gonna buy it, I would, I would just, you know, pick my color. That would be a place I would start. Um, but in terms of coverage, it's good. It doesn't look cakey on, maybe a little bit where I put the darker shades, but I think that once again, that's like a pigment problem. Um, or a color problem, like a shade problem, not necessarily like the foundation itself. I mean, like when I say like I barely tapped, this was like, doop, and you can like, it's messy because I tapped it, but you can barely tell that I even picked up color on this. They give you a lot of product, man. Are people using that much all over their face? Ooh, talk about some clogged pores. Um, all right. So I'm going to leave it at this because I don't need too much more color on my face and I don't need too much more coverage. I've been focusing on skincare. It has been my number one. And um, that has resulted in far less foundation and a far happier niche. All right, so I'm taking my Laura Mercier under eye brightener and I'm tossing that on top of the under eye foundation. I effectively just use that lighter shade as a concealer. This, in my opinion, is heavy enough to be a concealer. Um, and it covers and that works. And then I don't have to have like a super cakey concealer that's gonna kind of sink into the lines around my eyes. 
which I've also been working on with a night cream. So if you've got an opinion on that, mm -hmm. I'd love to hear. My initial gut reaction after putting that on though is like, um, okay, that was like a lot. I don't know that that's the right path for me. I don't know that that heavy foundation is, like I, their lighter color foundation or lighter coverage foundations um, are very, very good. Like their Ultra HD, which I think they even have a new formula of. I, am, I guess that means I'm still using the old formula unless it's like not that different, but it is very, very good. And I like it a lot. And even now though, because I'm so used to the Tom Ford and the NARS, even now though, I put that on and I'm like, oh, I'm going for a full face today. Like it's a definitely a full face makeup. This feels heavier. It already feels heavier on my face. Not like in a, in a really bad way, like huge heavy. I can just, I can tell something's on my face. Whereas the Tom Ford, like I put that stuff on, it melts into your skin, feels like butter. I could literally walk out of the house like with the Tom Ford foundation on right now and people would think it's my skin. And this like, does, people would be like, whoa, first of all, you didn't blend, girl. And second of all, it looks like you just like caked on heavy foundation on your face. So that's not great, but the show must go on. I'll see how it wears throughout the day too, you know? Okay, so still Valentine's week, so let's wrap up the week with um, some fun pinks. This is the 35XO uh, palette by Morph, Morphe. I am gonna just use a super neutral all over eye shade. And this is, oops, um, this is essentially a base coat. Like think of like when you go get your nails done, they put the base coat on just to make sure things go on smoothly. I don't really know why they put the base coat on actually. Maybe this wasn't the best analogy. However, it is similar in the sense that you're going to be putting on multiple layers. So that was your base coat and that basically just like mattifies your, um, um, your eyelash primer flow. The words lost me. And then now I'm going in with a brush about half the size, but it's still that tapered brush. And I'm filling in with a transition shade, which is kind of a neutral, um, like today I'm using, uh, it's kind of a neutral peachy. And I'm just going in and filling in, kind of like if you think on your eye, like where you would put your crease in kind of the darker accent colors or the darker shaded colors. This is the color that goes underneath that, both to help the pigment pop, but also like, so that if you put that darker color there, it's gonna naturally look like it faded out. And um, like, it, like just more of a gradient, you know? Because if you came in here first with a dark color and put that in the crease, it's gonna be like, you can do it, but it's gonna be pretty hard to blend that out where it's just a lot easier to layer on top and like gradually build up. And if you can do it in a really controlled way, then you don't have to deal with the like insane fallout underneath and you know, the fallout powder sticking, fallout eyeshadow sticking to your, um, your foundation and all of that. I do put that setting, that Laura Mercier eye brightening powder on under eye to, you know, to brighten, but also uh, to like set the foundation slightly. It's kind of worked the same as like a translucent powder. And that makes it to where if stuff does fall down, I can wipe it away a lot easier. And I started doing that because I was looking at a picture of myself the other day, duh. And I noticed that I was looking a little cakey. And I realized it's because I was piling eye through the help of multiple makeup artists and friends and YouTube videos and panic. Realized that I was basically under eye baking for not only just too long, but also too much. I was... Like, I think there's a time and a place for under eye baking. It's probably not everyday makeup. And also, um, not to the degree that I was. Like, I was like, I was basically like pressing powder all over my entire face and then trying to wipe it away. But it wasn't, you know, once you do that, it's harder for it to wipe away. All right. So I kind of blended those layers and built that up. And now I'm gonna go in with my smallest or one of my smallest angle brushes tape, tapered brushes I should have brushed. and I'm going to get a little deeper into the crease right here and into the corner and close to the eyelid where my liner should naturally sit and fill that in with a little bit of a darker plum and I'm doing that to kind of give my eye more of a whoop 
shape. See? Like so. All right, we're going to do that on this side too. Do a pretty small circle. Then I'm trying to control this while still monitoring time because, you know, I am a working professional. So I got to get to the office. So, like, that's actually a good preface it of, like, I feel like I'm pretty decent at makeup. I'm not a makeup artist, but I I do makeup pretty well, and at least on myself, um, others do. And um, if I was like, you know, gonna sit down for an event or something, there's a lot of the stuff that I wouldn't do or that I would do more carefully. But, you know, this is kind of like, this is me more so experimenting with everyday looks and getting ready for work, not, um, you know, like not, like trying to like show off a bunch of makeup skill that I think I have or something, you know. I'm just saying that for anybody that tunes in who's like, oh, she's not being careful enough with her brush or like whatever. Like, I'm going to the office, man. Okay, I've got meetings till 5 p.m. Like, don't come at me. I'm gonna wipe away any fallout that I might not really be able to see. And I think since I did kind of a uh, more of a plummy eye, I'm gonna like incorporate some uh, browns. I am gonna use this like, it's like a green uh greenish glittery eyeliner and this is because this is one of the lighter eyeliners that i have and once again i'm using this like i do almost every day um just to kind of catch some of the pigment but i'm going to top it with more of a brown like a plummy brown um eyeliner and it'll catch that pigment but that's how i'm going to pull in brown see how that like as i go over that kind of turned it a little bit more of a of a darker brown it still shows through a little bit but it's not like I don't know it just like catches that pigment and makes it a little bit stronger in the corner of my eye without me having to put a ton of um, eyeliner on all throughout it so I'm just gonna do a little light wing like that same thing over here all right and I usually smoke out underneath my eyes. It's just like the look that I think looks best on me. But occasionally I'll just like stick with this. And I think today would be a fun day to just like keep it a little bit more light under the eye. So I'm going to do that. And to make that work, I am going to go under the eye with a little bit of a like highlighter. I'm gonna, I'll clean this up with an angled brush in a second. That'll kind of make this pop and um, really define that more. Because I know that looks a little messy, but... Good place to start. All right, so now it's time for that cleanup that I was just talking about. All right, so I'm gonna go in with my angle brush. This might be, this is top five favorite brushes for me. Maybe top three. This is just an e.l.f. It's a foundation brush, but I just feel like it's the perfect br brush for all kinds of cleanup. And I purposefully like just leave the extra. I could have wiped that away or whatever, but I, I don't know. I just kind of like the way that like when I blend it all together, it helps it kind of gradually fade more and it just, I don't know, it, this just works for me. So this is the way I like to do it. All right, so I'm drawing all of that up to kind of draw that eye line up. All right, now we're gonna go in. I don't need to do a ton of contouring on the cheeks because like you can clearly see that. I'm gonna come in slightly I don't want to do too much because this foundation is a little heavier and like you can already tell by me putting that powder on it like it really grabbed onto it and I just don't want it to look oh see Jesus all right I don't want it to look cakey but here we are all right I'm gonna have to buff that out all right let's use something else and buff out some of that okay all right I'm gonna come in and just like barely graze over that add a little bit of color in the cheek and then I don't really trust it up here, so I'm like barely touching on the forehead. Okay. Yeah, this foundation, it's a little too heavy. I think because it's so heavy, it, it's like, it's kind of like, like you put lotion on to some degree, like it's gotta dry almost is what I'm feeling like. I don't know, um, but it seems like it should have dried by now. Okay, so I'm gonna go in heavier with my lighter shades that I usually like kind of pop my contour with. And that's because the colors of the Foundation were a little bit darker than like my ideal color since it was just a sample pack and That'll help uh, lighten up my face a little bit more so I'm not you know as faux spray tanned In February All right, All right now it is time for 
the ultimate buff out. So I'm gonna take this uh, powder brush. This is like a tighter one. This is the one that I use for my translucent powders. You can tell it's like, this is powder brush. This is follow face brush. I don't know what that means, whatever, but it's a brush. And this one's a little bit tighter, so it's easier to buff out and kind of blend all of this together so that I don't have a bunch of lines on my face. This brush is dry, so I didn't put any powder on it. I didn't put any product on it. It's just kind of blending what's already on the face. All right, and so that blends it out a lot better. When I turned to the side, I noticed that this wasn't super, super blended. So we're gonna, we're gonna fix that with our fingers. The best makeup brushes. I'm gonna go ahead and add in a little bit of bronzer from that same contour palette all down my neck since that foundation was heavier than I normally wear. I usually always bring my, my powder and bronzer down my neck. I just don't have to do it that dark, but today's a different day. I've been on a kick lately with my NARS um, liquid blush and orgasm. I'm going to keep that going and see how it blends with the foundation throughout the day. Cause this, cause the liquid blush is like, you know, it's kind of foundation-y. It's like it melts into the skin and kind of operates like foundation. You know, it's super pigmented when it goes on and then it kind of blends, kind of sinks in. It's probably time for a good clean of my beauty blender because um, I didn't intend to take my blush all the way down here, but my beauty blender did, you know, just a little bit extra. All right, yeah, I just, oh God, I love this blush, it's so good. Okay, and that even, like that'll continue to like sink in and set from what I've seen out of that product. All right, so as that is doing, as that, as that is doing that, as that, as that happens, I'm going to take my translucent powder, kind of dust it all over the face. I am going to focus a little bit more on some of the oily areas, like the nose, the forehead, and the chin, like that T-zone area, because uh, this foundation is a lot heavier than I'm used to, and I have a feeling that it will be melting off later. But I can't say that yet, gotta give it a shot. Okay, and so I, I still barely put any translucent powder on. I mean, just a quick little dab. Okay, <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Now I'm gonna come back in with my highlighter. Add that to the top of the cheekbones ever so lightly. The nose and the cupid's bow. I like this little compact because it's like a dual bronzer highlighter and I can kind of hit underneath the cheekbones to angle out my super round face. <laughs> and um, generally after I do that, I'll go back with one of my face brushes and just kind of sweep over, blend it all in again, you know? Now it is time for the eyebrows. I stick to these last so that they're not clouded with a bunch of um, powder. And I'm gonna keep these a little bit more natural today. Let me brush up and out like that. Filling in just a little bit of the gaps. Keeping these more natural because I didn't go super heavy on the um, under eye. So I'm just kind of filling those in like what looks like a hair stroke. I'm going to go right there. Usually I'm a lot more like focused on the lines, but I'm kind of just like filling in today. And there we go. And I'll take a spoolie and buff those out. I just uh, need some hair right here. I need some color. That's the only thing that really bothers me about this brow is that the front is just like lacking. And then when I, you know, buff it out with a spoolie or something, it kind of takes a lot of the color away and then it lightens it up too much. Um, this brow is just not growing in hair the way the other one is. But I've been using, um, I use Roden and Fields Lash Boost on my lashes. I've used that for years and that stuff works. It's awesome. Don't come at me with the MLM stuff. I don't sell it, but I am buying it because uh, that stuff actually works. Um, but I got um, uh, a tube of the Grande Lash. So I've been using Grande Lash for the past few days and I've been putting it on my eyebrows in hopes um, that it will help them grow. I used to do that with the Lash Boost on my eyebrows too, but I just like, they, they filled in really well and then I stopped doing it and then they didn't fill in really well anymore. And so I need to just keep going, but I got lazy. All right, so that is, I think I'm gonna leave the look at this today. I'm, yeah, keeping the under eye a little light. Now I'll go in with a, um, 
I'll lay up and stuff in a second. But um, since my hair is dirty, I'm gonna have to do kind of a similar style to what I did yesterday. This like, you know, low um, art gallery slash colonial bun, like so. Um, I just, I had to cut all the platinum out of my hair. And as a result, there's not a lot that I can do with my hair right now um, because of how freaking short it is. I'm sure you people with short hair are like, oh, you can do so many styles. I'm sure a hairstylist could rock this, but you know what? That's not me. My hair looks so greasy right now. Um, I mean, I can't, I can't, this is horrible. Um, yeah, so what if I did like a fun clip? God, I hate it already. As I said it, I hated it. Um, okay, I could... I don't want to leave it like that looks so stupid to me. I think it looks better in the um, better in like a little in a low bun, like a tight bun. That's what I had yesterday. And then I can tease this up and get like a little bit more volume so it doesn't look like as slick back to my head. Um, but maybe I'll like throw in a scarf or something. I don't know. I'm really struggling with the hair game lately. I just I'm just like willing it to grow. I want it to grow so bad. I want my long hair back. <sighs> This is the hard part about haircuts. They don't tell you. You think it's fun, it's time for a change. But when you're in your bathroom on a Thursday, trying to get ready for work and literally have no options for your hair because you have no hair. All right, so I'm gonna brush that out. It's so greasy, it's grossing me out. Oh my God. I'm definitely washing my hair tonight, but okay. So this is like more of what I'm thinking. I'm gonna have to pull that section up and then brush this out. But yeah, this is more of the vibe. So more like low bun. So at least when I turn to the side, it kind of looks a little more purposeful, but still casual. I don't know. Does that, does that work? Does that work? Mm, never cut your hair. Don't do it. It's not a good look. All right. We're going for it. Doing the, basically the exact same hairstyle that I did yesterday which is this awkward low bun that juts out. God, I hate it so much. Gonna get some bobby pins to stab myself in the eye so I don't have to look at this. All right, I'm gonna brush, do a little comb over all the T's and imperfections and grease. Let that sink in there. All right, cute. Brush this out. Why do celebrities look so good with like their hair slicked back like this? And I'm over here looking like I'm like stirring butter. Okay churning butter okay all right so and then i'm gonna add it like that that to me feels uh oh i use my um i use my uh i only have one blonde ponytail holder so i have to use my black one on the bottom and then cover it with my blonde one when i do my bun like that um i need to get some more blonde ones i don't know why i bought black ones in the first place why do i have black ponytail holder i've never had black hair all right, so we're gonna make some of that pop out like so. So it looks a little messy, like, oh, she just tossed her hair up, she's not trying. But in fact, I'm trying very hard, very hard. If you only knew how hard I'm trying every morning for this colonial bun. Oh, I long for the days where I could literally toss my hair up in a messy bun because it was so long and it held curls so well before I fried the shit out of it. And I could like literally just pop out of bed, let down my scrunchie, do a little, oh, and then gorgeous, gorgeous, mermaid ways for days. People would drool, they would stop me. It was good times. Doesn't happen anymore. I haven't had a person tell me they like my hair in like six years, what's that? Always important to check the back for reasons like so. Okay, we're just gonna brush that over, hide things in there, cool. All right, this actually uh, sort of looks better than it did yesterday. I'm gonna pull up some of this. Give me a little bit more height up here. Ooh, it's always dangerous. It's a dangerous game. Pull up that height, you know. Okay, we're at, we're at. It physically hurts in the back of my head right now, but you know, I'm only gonna wear it for eight to 12 hours, so it's fine. Okay, all right, now I look. I think I'm gonna do like a nude pink neutral today because I did like a fun lip yesterday. I do have to wear a mask in the office and so that was bold on me because like there's a lot of friction there, but I made it through. But I'm thinking that I'm just gonna go for more of a subtle 
pinky lip today. Um, so to accomplish that, I'm going, actually, I'm gonna use my iconic nude and sharpen you, buddy. Where is my sharpener? If you're looking for a sharpener, I'm telling you, go spend $10 and get the Urban Decay sharpener, two sizes. This shit is fire. I don't know why I'm so into a sharpener, but I am. Catches all your clippings. I just freaking love this sharpener. Probably because I, for like literally 10 years, I used the same elf sharpener that came with like my makeup kit when I was like 11. And it like, like I, I couldn't cut, if I tried to cut my finger on that, there's no way I could. It was so dull. And I was, I was basically like scraping, like whittling away at, the, at my pencils to sharpen them every time. So I ended up just using like little nubs every time. And then I was, I finally was just like, hey, I need a sharpener. And they were like, here, this one's $10. And I was like, why have I been struggling for 10 years, unable to sharpen a tool with a $10 sharpener? And I think we're good. The smoothest sharp, sharpener, sharpenies. Okay, whatever, you get the point. All right. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go in, actually, you know what? I've been really into this nude sticks lately. This is nudes sticks, nudies. So this is, can be used like all over your face, eyes, lips, cheeks, whatever. Um, I just use it on my lips because it's like shaped like a lipstick and it's what I do. Um, but I really, really like this color and really, really like the, this like whole vibe that the nude stick is giving me. I'm a big fan of it. So this is in um, Bohemian Rose. Mixed with that uh, iconic nude, it's looking a little bit pink, but when I toss on a gloss over it, works out pretty well. Um, I'm going to use this Laneige uh, Everyday Lip Gloss in Berry. It's got a little bit of a pinky tint to it. It'll pull out that rose nicely and then kind of mask the contrast between the brown and the pink a little more. And there we go. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. I don't know. To me, it kind of, it kind of, uh, this rag is so gross. I keep showing it on camera. This is how I, that's where I was like literally blotting my, uh, beauty blender to get all that <laughs> foundation off because it was so intense. Um, but I mean, I went for like a brown, like a dark brown kind of rosy mauve on the, not mauve, mauve has purple, right? I don't know. What I'm trying to say is that it sort of matches up here. Okay. That's all I'm trying to say. All right, I think this is this is the look for me. So I'm gonna spray with my continuous mist setting spray. I like this because it's continuous mist. Um, I think I got a bad one though because something's going on with my mist top. It only sprays out of like half of it. Still using it. Um, this is the mattifying one. I would be curious just to try their regular. I mean, I just it's hard for me to believe that the mattifying really does anything different. But I also do like a matte look, so I don't know. Um, but I just really like the continuous mist instead of the spritzers because um, this one like goes on and almost instantly dries because it's such a fine mist. Whereas the spritzer ones like Urban Decay, very, very good. However, your face is like wet for a minute, you got to dry. Um, it's kind of happening a little bit with this one right now because like I was saying, the, the little thing is broken or something. It's like spraying out of one side. So it's kind of going on like a spritzer. So it's a little heavy on this side, but, but I do just like the continuous mist. It's like hairspray. All right. I'm happy with this look. I like it. Okay, I am gonna head into the office. So I'm gonna put on the rest of the look. I'm gonna go put on an outfit off camera. And um, if you wanna see what that is, you can head on over to my Instagram, at Misha America, and check out my look for the day. And then if you like me or you like my makeup, come back tomorrow, um, cause I'll be here doing it again. So I, I do um, makeup with Misha every morning at 8 a.m. Roughly 8 a.m., you know, I got kids. Mm, falls how it falls, but every morning before I get ready for work, you can join me and also get ready for work. So see you back here tomorrow, Friday, roughly 8 a.m. And we'll do a different look. All right. Thanks for watching guys. Oh, and by the way, before you head out, go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell so that when I go live, you get notified. Okay. Thanks. And see you tomorrow.